Welcome to the RP Show. With me, the Tubiac Maniac. And me, Steve Johnson. Season 2, episode number 7. <laughs> Mike, lay it on me. Who have we got this week? We have the God of Thunder. Oh, <laughs> no, sorry. I mean, we have a guy that we have uh, we know really, really pretty well, actually. He's been really close over the uh, past year or so. Um, he's been on my podcast, and uh, we've been on his a bunch. He's an editor. Uh, we have Mr. Lance Johnson. Oh, we've got Lance on. Hey, Lance. Hey, how hey. you doing, Lance? Is it cold where you are? It is cold. So I have this hat on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's what, also bright skills? orange. I'm trying to represent, you know, the see through podcast orange. Oh, you nice. know, nice. Oh, we'll get to that. Hey, Lance, uh, how about you tell everybody where your current eyesight is? Uh, well, I wear glasses. <laughs> Outside of RP, I have terrible vision just in general. With RP, uh, I'm not legally blind, uh, I, but I do have a de- decreased, you know, field of vision. And I also have a couple like central blind spots, like uh, right here, for example, I can't see my hand, but over here I can, you know, so it's kind of odd. Gotcha. I don't know if you can see that on the recording, but <clears throat> I'm planning to go get a new uh, field vision test done here soon because I want to know my exact number. I haven't had a field vision test in six years. Uh, So I don't, I don't really know what it was. I will say this, the last field vision test I did, they, uh, the, the tech, I guess is what you would call whoever gave me the test, like clapped at the end. It was like, wow, that's your results are really good for someone with RP. I'll take it. You know? (laughs) So that said, uh, what's your current cane status? Are you a early life cane user thinking about getting a cane yet? Putting it off? What's your uh, what's your cane status? I uh, I don't I don't use a cane. I have bought a cane because I should use a cane, <laughs> especially at nighttime or uh, more crowded areas, which I find myself in a lot here in New York City. For whatever reason, my 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 mind's not quite there yet to to take that leap, and I want to do it the right way with uh, training and all that. So I have a cane but I've never used it. And, uh, there's times where I feel like I'm fine without it. And I almost forget I had, I have RP. And then there's times where I, uh, trip over someone or bump into someone who's the only other person around me. <laughs> and they look at me like I'm <laughs> like, like, I'm like, crazy. Why, like, like, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, that's, what's so confusing about should I use the cane or not is, it's not consistent. Like my experience with my vision mm-hmm. isn't consistent. So I, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I think we could, a lot of us could understand and relate to that. So, I mean, I yeah. had the same issue my, in my twenties and stuff like that. No. Did I have well, moments the, like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the thing with the cane too, and I I've heard people on my podcast talk about this, but it's a big deal because it kind of out outs you, you know, to the public. Oh, right. Yep. You know, right. Well, like without the cane, I, I can blend in, but if I have a cane, everyone's going to see me and, uh, they'll know I have a visual impairment and I, and I don't necessarily want that attention for whatever reason, just being honest. Be, and I, I'm, I'm nervous about it for multiple reasons because I have pretty good central vision. Like I said, I'm not legally blind. I'm worried that, you know, the classic scenario where people see me look at my phone and have a cane Oh, and they God. get confused. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's a fear of mine. Also in New York City, I also get worried about being kind of targeted for being visually impaired because I, I walk around a lot by myself and okay. I don't want to look like an easy mugging t- target. And I'm not even that. sure yeah. if, if that's real. Like, is that real? Do like do blind people get mugged a lot? I don't even know if that's real, but I, I it pops into my head. Yeah. <laughs> so th- those are two other reasons. Um a third reason too is just like again, like I said, I want to have training, but to be honest, when I when I walk around with a cane, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. So I feel like I would I would look silly even trying to use it because I would just look like I'm 
I would look like I'm faking it because I don't know how to use the cane. You know what I mean? So, so, so you'd feel like a fake and then look like a fake. I would feel and look like a fake. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's my answer. Yeah. Cool. No, that's good. Really, really good answer. And I think a lot Perfect. of our viewers will relate with what you're saying. Um, we, we, we with RP are in a very unique position in relation to the cane, aren't we? Because it's not, it's not like a definitive when you should use it. And I think everybody goes through that phase of <clears throat> not wanting to use it because you don't need it and you still have some vision, but then you get moments in life that catch you out where you think to yourself, Hmm, if I was using a cane, that would not have just happened. Oh yeah, exactly. It would have been a lot easier to explain had I had a cane in my hand. It's hard to explain somebody you're blind. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you have these shirts that you make. There's one, I think it says just use it with the cane on it. I was wearing yeah, that actually. <laughs> yeah. And I saw when I see that shirt, I almost feel uh, guilty. I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably should use my cane. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, I've... you got to do it in your own time, haven't you? And that's what we say to everybody. When you feel the need to use it, then great. And uh, what we hope to do on this show is break down the stigma of people thinking it's not like um, it's not like sort of breaking the glass in a way. It's kind of like, you know, we sort of get groomed socially to believe one day you're not a cane user. The next day you are a cane user. We're not very open to the, to the um, using it when you need it sort of philosophy. We feel like, you know, I felt like once I used my cane on day one, I had to use it then every day because you can't go from using the cane on Monday and not using one on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> All <the> questions. <laughs> I feel like that too. That that's also part of it. Cause then it's like, why does he need it? Why does Lance need it then? You know, like my friends might be like, why does Lance need it this situation and not that situation? Uh so Lance, I see uh that you've done something similar to uh myself and picked a field that you went into that requires eyesight despite knowing you have RP. So uh, let's tell everybody what you do for a living. Yeah, because you, you went into graphic design, right? Yeah, yep. I still, may I still do it, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just ironic we picked like these fields when we know what we got. <laughs> yeah, so my current job is I'm a I'm a video editor, um, and I wasn't always a, just a video editor. I used to also shoot video. Um, like I said earlier, I I'm not legally blind, so I still have quite a bit of like central vision left, so I can see, you know, a computer screen which is all you need to edit. How do you feel about that now then? Because surely if you're, are you, are you trying to get clients and offer to edit people's videos and, you know, there's a lot of industries like that, isn't there, where it's probably not, it's not that obvious to the other people that you could still be a good editor. Like for example, if I ordered a taxi or for, on Uber and my Uber driver turned up with a cane, or oh, my pilot. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, uh, okay. I'll get the next uh, you one. Know, my, my natural <laughs> assumption would be this is not going to be a great taxi ride. <laughs> Likewise, if I hired a graphic designer and he turned up at my office with a white cane or a video editor with a white cane, <laughs> that does raise some fairly obvious like questions. So do you think that's a reason why you kind of like don't advertise it too much and, and keep it on the down low? Yeah, I de definitely. And there's, there's a lot of like, you know, social media is so public and I host a podcast, so I have like, I have that as a, a a social media account that I use, and I almost treat that separate than myself, you know, because myself is my work and in life, and I have a lot of friends that I work with in my industry that are just now learning that I have RP, um, and for a while I didn't want people to know, like I said, because I didn't. I didn't want it to affect me, but at this, at, at a certain point, you kind of have to, you know, at a certain point, you kind of just have to say, I have RP, but Hey, here's the work I do. You know, let the, let the work speak for itself. You know, if there, if there ever comes a time where I can't edit anymore, if I'm missing glaring errors because of, I'm not seeing the full frame of the image and, you know, then I might have to pick something different or just kind of, alter my workflow as I go to adapt to it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the thing with art, with RP and being a video editor is, and I think this goes with a lot of other jobs too, it, or just anything. If you're, you know, visually impaired, people assume that you're going to be slower. You're going to uh, need more accommodations or, 
uh, more guidance, uh, which can be, you know, true if you're going into a new office. Um, but yeah, I'm freelance and I, I work, I do a lot of commercial work, uh, a lot of social media content, um, some, some stuff in the fashion industry I've done. Um, I've worked with um, brands like Tom Ford and uh, Sonic. And uh, right now I'm working with Viacom on uh, some, some Jersey uh, Shore um, content. Wow. Uh, awesome. So as well as being the video editor stuff, you mentioned uh, the podcast. So for anybody listening that might want to check that out, do you want to uh, big up the podcast and uh, tell us what that's all about, what your mission is? Yeah. Uh, the see-through podcast is how I know you guys, because mm. uh, <laughs> you've been on the see-through podcast uh, officially three times, but only two episodes are out. Uh, so if you're listening, keep an eye out for an episode or their third appearance of the RP show on the see through podcast. Um, but yeah, I have a podcast and I started it, you know, during COVID, um, cause I, I had some time, um, and I had, but it goes, it goes back before that. I just kind of used that time to execute what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I have a podcast called the C Three Podcast, and the, the tagline is uh, "Creating Transparency on Disabilities and the Champions with Them." So, it's a passion project that you know, I do here in my bedroom, and essentially, I just interview you know people with disabilities, and I ask them questions about their specific disability. It's, it's I have RP, so I, I talk to a lot of people with RP, but I also talk to a lot of people with you know it could be cerebral palsy or um, you know. Uh, dwarfism or you know various disabilities and uh it doesn't matter because um i have a theory that there's a lot you can learn from people with other disabilities this if you have a disability you could probably relate to someone who has a, a different disability you know because there's a lot of similar stigmas and a lot of similar uh mental adaptations i think we have to go through um to, to kind of function in a world um, that's not really built for us. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of where the conversations are. And I, and I started this podcast because, like I said, I, was, I do a lot of commercial video editing and it's, it's selling products. And I, I'm proud of my work. I think my edits are good, but I wanted to do something that had uh, – a positive result versus just selling something. I want to do something that was kind of like, uh, sorry if it's cliche, but like good for my soul. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to something to feel, I wanted like a creative project that I felt like was uh, providing, I like to, I, I call it providing value for people, um, you know. And you've had some uh, high level uh, guests on from what I remember. Did you have the two blind brothers on? Yeah, yeah, the two blind brothers. They were my uh, second episode, That's like crazy. or second guest. So I, I was very hyped when they agreed to come on because, again, I just started, so um, I didn't really have a portfolio that they could listen to and be like, "Yeah, hey, it sounds good." They just kind of took a blind uh, <laughs> you know, leap of faith Ooh. and uh, came on. Um, uh, and I actually ended up, I, I actually edited some videos for them, uh, for their social media. So that actually turned into like a job, like a, you some, work. some work. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. So Lance, like we find you like really inspirational. I know you're such a modest guy. You probably do not think of yourself as an inspiration in any way, shape or form. But one thing that's, that's really stood out to, to Mike and I is you took the decision early on with your RP to up sticks from was it north carolina south carolina yeah north carolina north carolina so you decided to move from north carolina uh, i've got this right you did some sofa surfing stayed with some friends until you hooked up your own place but essentially you moved to new york to control your situation didn't you yeah basically um yeah i was 27 when i moved to new york and i had only lived in north carolina and that's the only state i ever lived in and um, but yeah, I, I always kind of had, I always kind of knew I ha had to move somewhere, but so, I, yeah, uh, it's fascinating to me because I've been to New York a couple of times and I, 
in some ways, I think it would be the worst possible place to go with, with RP because <laughs> it, it's just it's like so mad, so yeah. busy. Parts of it are a bit scary. Uh, but then really? from talking to you, you, you made me think differently because you what you mentioned to me was around all the transit links, transport, being able to get Ubers, put everything on your doorstep. And that was that like your main motivation or? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, going back to, like I said, my mom, who doesn't use a you know, Kane, she doesn't drive. She's legally blind. I gave up my license when I moved here because I was just my, vi- I could tell my vision was deteriorating and I, I didn't want to risk in an accident or hurting someone. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to quit driving. So if you live basically anywhere outside of New York or these major cities, you, you have to drive. Um, and the U.S. is a big driving city, so I knew I I, I don't I want to give up driving, um, because, and so I should move to New York and use the subway because if not, I'm going to be like my mom and I'm going to have to rely on everyone else. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the only problem with New York is it's very expensive, and like you said, it's it's very chaotic. Sometimes it depends on where you're at. Um, lots of people and you know, people, I, I mean, obstacle, so, it's an RP obstacle course, honestly, uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. So there's pros and cons, like it's not, yeah. you know, perfect, but in terms of not having to drive and me being able to get around and get to an office or like, for example, it's like, it's dark out right now. When I was driving, I would hate having to leave the office to go home because I didn't want to drive when it's dark. Um, I mean, it's a badass move to move to New York. I mean, were you not like yeah, apprehensive like, or scared ooh. of like leaving your sort of support network? Yeah, I left everything. I, I had a full time job. Um, ooh. I had, uh, and it was a great job too, with great co workers and boss. And it was in my field. I was, you know, um, it was in the video world. And I had a lot of friends in in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is where I moved from. At the end of the day, it's it was a selfish move for myself, but I I wouldn't have it any other way. To be honest, sometimes I feel like you have to be selfish. I know that sounds selfish, <laughs> but no, uh, I mean I think I think that I think that's where uh, we're getting down to the inspiration yeah. now because you, you, yeah. you what's inspirational about this is you've 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 perceived the future in a way. And you have kind of, st- you've took steps to mitigate and future proof yourself. Yeah. You know, you've, you've, you know, I, I know from where I live here, there are people um, maybe not quite as isolated as what it is in the U S because it's a much smaller country. However, there are people here that are in bad locations in terms of employment opportunities and transport links. So they put themselves in a position where their only option is to quit work, go on disability because they just haven't got, any infrastructure around them. And if I suggested to those people, hey, why don't you move to New York? They would absolutely freak out. No. It would be like the worst <laughs> thing. But like you've said, you know, it's a great, you know, if you can do that in your, you know, anybody watching this, anybody that's, you know, having those anxious thoughts you were thinking of, you were talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they might not move to New York, but this this whole story that you're, you're, you're talking to me and Mike about now, that might make other people think, about changing their environment or manipulating their environment to future proof, future proof themselves, and yeah. ultimately lead to them being happy, successful, productive. So that's why you know we really want to talk about this and, and dig into like the how scary it was making the move, and like and now you're reaping the benefits, aren't you? So you, you you've met a new girlfriend, you've got married, <laughs> you're getting steady flow of work, and um, and you're managing walking around a very busy city, and you don't use your cane even though you should do. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's worked out. It's worked out for me. I I have, I'm very happy. I made the move and I feel very um, fortunate that I was able to pull it off. Like when I moved, I didn't know if it would actually work. Um, And it has, you know, so there was a risk to it. Uh, I didn't really have much of a safety net. Um, So it, it was, it was a risk. What's your most embarrassing RP moment in New York? My uh, wife's birthday, and uh, we did a little picnic in a park. 
uh we had a blanket and uh some food we had my dog out there nice and uh so uh, there's a public bathroom and other people are doing what we're doing other people have blankets and have picnics going on um so i'm like yeah hey, i'm gonna go to the bathroom so I'm, I'm walking confidently to the bathroom and boom you know i i trip and i fall directly onto a people picnicking on a blanket like four people sitting down oh, oh God. i fall directly onto their onto their blanket onto them because like, some, I slam, guess they, they were in my they were in my blind spot and i guess i was too confident too cocky thing hey, i'm good i'm walking to the bathroom no, nothing's in my way and boom i tripped and fell on them and they and again like i don't use a cane for their for, from their perspective they're just like this dude just walked straight into us they thought it was intentional oh no and they said you know there were some swear words they're like what <laughs> what the, is your problem you know <laughs> and i look at him i'm like oh i'm so sorry you know you know you gotta apologize i got really good at apologizing uh, oh, about did you but, say i'm really sorry i didn't see you yeah 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 didn't see uh, you there no i because i felt like they wouldn't they wouldn't buy it <laughs> so i I, uh -huh. I pulled the drunk card no way you did it yeah yeah i did i said <laughs> i said ah, i'm just real drunk <laughs> and then they looked at me and they, that didn't honestly didn't didn't make it any better they were still yeah. pissed at me and, and I'm wasted, i got up man. and left and uh i uh, think they could tell that it wasn't i think they're once they figured out it wasn't intentional and i was apologetic they loosened up a bit but they were very uh <laughs> They still weren't like gonna invite me over to their picnic. <laughs> no. <laughs> Afterwards. So Mike always has a really good question, which is like, what advice would you give to somebody just finding out they've got RP or your younger self, you know, in terms of like your your perspective of how you how you see the world of RP? Yeah, I I guess I would say, you know, your perspective. <laughs> perspective changes that definitely changes that's, that's a... it gets gets a lot smaller <laughs> but also yeah. bigger <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh and i guess if that if i had to give any advice it would be i feel like you got to take a pro i guess it take a proactive approach you know don't put it off until you you your disability has progressed so far that now you, you you're forced to deal with it you know be proactive learn I love that. Yeah. Build a community, yeah. have friends in your network, learn the tools and technology, uh, you know, just, uh, and, and then every day you'll get more comfortable and eventually what you, what you used to view as so, such doom and gloom, like I used to have panics thoughts at my desk. Now I almost feel proud to have RP and I have this podcast that gives me so much joy and fulfillment and, and I almost feel like, uh, and I, I, I've said this before, but if I didn't have RP, I wouldn't have the life I have right now. I wouldn't be in New York, probably. I wouldn't, which means I right. wouldn't have my friend group, which means I wouldn't have met my wife, you know? So like, I wouldn't, wouldn't have met us. Have, We're I, so I, cool. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have met you guys. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have a podcast. Like I, like, Let's be real. I wouldn't have a podcast about disabilities if I didn't have RP. You know what I mean? Like, would, would, would you have even thought to have a podcast in general? I, yeah. You know? I may have had a podcast, but it might have been about something. Yeah, random, completely. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's like, I uh, like, I like, like, don't get me wrong. I like, if there, if I could be cured from RP, I would. Oh, but, I mean, sign me but, up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, I kind of like having RP uh, some days, <laughs> you know, oh, no. and so, and, but I didn't used to feel that way. And the only reason I feel that way is because I put in work and, and uh, haven't put it off. So Lance, uh, how would you tell everybody where we can find all your stuff that you got going on? Well, all my stuff is in my apartment. <laughs> and, and, and what is your address so we can find it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's seethroughpod.com, S-E-E-T-H-R-O-U-G-H-P-O-D.com. Uh, there you'll find everything about the podcast. 
you can find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok. The handle is at see through pod. You can email me uh, see through podcast at gmail.com. You can DM me on any social media platform. Uh, and I also have a, my personal handle for Instagram is, uh, at Lance Kestrel, L A N C E K E S T R E L. And if you want to look at my video editing portfolio, you can, I was going to uh, say, I was going to ask you about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it's, it's my, that. my full name, uh, Lance Kestrel Johnson dot com. Oh, isn't yeah, that the same as your out. only fans? Yeah, the same as my only fan. <laughs> and then is there, there, is you this month? there you see a lot of see-through material. <laughs> <laughs> see the beans. <laughs> I'm not editing this out. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, lads. Uh, we, we love coming on your podcast. And um, over the last year or so, we've had a lot of laughs chatting to you about RP and uh, three different perspectives and situations and um, I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing what you probably think is just a you know well this is just my day-to-day life but right. who knows maybe somebody out there some young guy might just take that little bit of inspiration around I might now do this if he can do that maybe I can do something and it might not be the same but it might just give them a little bit of hope a little bit of inspiration so um for me mate thanks thanks a lot for coming on hopefully we'll yeah have you on and thanks for having me on yeah, like, thanks, man. this was fun because it's cool being on the other side you know? <laughs> it's a lot um, different right <laughs> yeah and like I, and like you said if anyone really does want to reach out like just reach out to me dm me or email me thanks for watching this week's episode i'm afraid that's all we have time for i hope you found lance's perspective and his journey interesting and um, if you did please consider sharing that with somebody that has rp Don't forget to share, follow and subscribe on YouTube, follow our channel and also don't forget to follow us on all the socials on Instagram and Facebook where you can find us at The RP Show.